Sodomites did. They were exactly like the people of Sodom. They were exactly like all the lands, all the people of the land that God cast out before he brought Israel in. I want you to think about that. So there is a cause. All the pagan worship. And, and I'm always going to bring the Bible in on the scene because when we abandon the Bible, when we walk away from the God of our fathers, this is what shows up. So it's no wonder that we are the way we are in this country. So, here's the cause. They've turned to idol worship. They went away from God. They quit reading the Bible. They quit praying. They quit, they quit following after the scriptures and God's law. They said, we don't want anything to do with it. Don't, don't you dare post that Ten Commandments on that school wall. The federal whatever of teachers, federation of teachers, is a sodomite. I guarantee you he does not want the Ten Commandments in the schools. So that's the cause. Let me show you what the effect is. We move on down to verse 26. 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 25. And it came to pass in the fifth year of the king of Rehoboam. Fifth. I want you that number five. Always the fifth angel sounds. The, the beast comes up. Revelation chapter 9. And it came to pass in the fifth year of king Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. And I want you to look at what happened in verse 26. And he took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He even took away all, and he took away all the shields of gold which Solomon had made. So number one, okay, uh, all the gold, the financial ruin. Number two, took away all the treasures of the house of the Lord. I'm going to show you exactly. Everybody says, oh yeah, this is the, the gold stuff that was in the house of the Lord. Um, yeah, if you think that way, it's, uh, yeah, we are, we are losing our shirt in this country. We're losing all of our money in this country. That is, uh, the sinfulness of America is definitely having an effect upon the finances of America. But let me show you what the Bible means when it talks about the treasures of the house of the Lord. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 2. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom, and apply thine heart to understanding, yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and liftest up thy voice for understanding, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as for hid treasures, then shalt understand the fear of the Lord, and find the knowledge of God. You know what the, you know what the real treasures of the Lord is? Biblical wisdom. Biblical knowledge. Biblical understanding. Go out in the street and ask anybody a Bible question, and they go, Duh, you don't know. We don't know what the Bible is anymore. In this, go out and ask the average church member to quote John three sixteen. They can't do it. They don't know what the Bible. We have had our treasures taken away in this country, and by that I mean this Bible. We've had the treasures taken away out of the house of the Lord, right out of the church. So now they're they're using uh, all these all these other Bible. There's not not really a lot of treasure in here. And I'm going to show you something here in a minute. Um, not really a lot of treasures left in the house of God. There's not really a lot of knowledge and understanding and wisdom. You call it, we call it the dumbing down of America. They've dumbed down our school systems. They've dumbed down the American person. They have now dumbed down the churches. Why? Because they took all the treasures of understanding and wisdom and knowledge right out of the house of the Lord. And people, they couldn't quote you scriptures. They couldn't tell you Bible stories. And you know why those are so important? The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, the workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, I believe that God wants us to know what's in this Bible because when we have knowledge of what's in this Bible, we can look around and we're going, Wow, that is exactly what's going on in the Bible. But you get, you get ignorant people in the church because of their soft stand on sin. And, and, and you follow me. Here, here we have all these church people that are probably having adulterous affairs. We have people who are shacking up, living together in fornication, in sin, without the benefit of marriage. And they're attending these churches in, by the thousands. So do you think that they're going to take a hard stand against sodomy? Or do you think they're going to just kind of ease it in? Well, we can't condemn us because we're obviously living in sin, so we can't condemn them anymore either. And so God has allowed Pharaoh to come into America and take away all of our treasures. This country, we're in so deep in debt now, we're going to lose everything one of these days. 
And he's taken away the treasures out of the house of the Lord. That's, that's cause and effect. You see, see Obama and, and a lot of the liberals, even in the conservative, even, excuse me, even the Republican Party, the Re Republican liberals, they're trying to sell this idea. They're going around the country selling this idea that if we just recognize everybody's equality, if we just recognize everybody's, um, you know, everybody's got, e they're all equal in God's sight and their lifestyles, our diversity. Let's celebrate our diversity, how we're all split up, how we're all different. Let's celebrate that. So they're trying to sell this idea that if you're immoral, why, you should be like a hero to people. They go around trying to sell that idea everywhere and they're causing Americans to believe them. The effect is we have a generation of people who know not God, we have an entire civilization that is now basing itself upon immorality, including sodomy. And we've lost our treasures. Um, this article mentioned Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter came up in the news this week and he is like a, a, the typical, he is the exact thing that I am talking about. I want you to look at this. They interviewed, he's got a, he's got a new book. It's actually a, it's a Bible study. You see, Jimmy Carter uh, was a Southern Baptist. He was uh, going to a Baptist, Southern Baptist church in Georgia. And um, he was, uh, he's a member down, still is. And since he's been out of the presidency, I saw a news thing on him here a while back. He teaches Sunday school every Sunday and stands before his class and holds this little Bible study. So he's got a new book coming out. Let's, let's see what's on Jimmy Carter's mind. Former President Jimmy Carter is a controversial figure here in America. But beyond being known in more conservative circles for his intriguing, sometimes troubling, depending on with whom one is speaking, positions, he has also distinguished himself with his outspoken Christianity. Stop right here. Outspoken Christianity. Um, let me just say that it's a, it's a different it's a different Christianity than the, than the one that I'm out speaking about. Okay, It's a different one. I'll show you how. His new book. Here we go. NIV Lessons from Life Bible. Personal Reflections with Jimmy Carter. Stop right here. This is, I, 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 this is my former friend. The New International Version of the Bible. We used to be friends and we're not friends anymore. I don't miss you, by the way. I have a... I have a better friend, okay? NIV. So he stands up in front of a Southern Baptist who at one time you could count on those guys. Mm. Uh, Southern Baptist with his NIV Bible and he teaches Sunday school and he's written a book. The Jimmy Carter NIV Lessons from the Bible. Let's see what kind of lessons uh, he has. Uh, some of the former president's own lessons that he taught over the years during Sunday school at Maranatha Baptist Church in Plains, Georgia. These lessons are meshed together with texts from the New International Version of the Bible. The Huffington Post senior religion editor Paul Brandy's Rashenbush started the conversation by asking Carter if God wrote the Bible. Stop. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. The first thing, first thing a Bible Christian has got to get settled is, did God write the Bible? Did God write the Bible? Okay, here we go. Here is Jimmy Carter, the Sunday school teacher's answer. Quote, God inspired the Bible, but didn't write every word in the Bible. Stop right here. He inspired the Bible, but he didn't write every word in the Bible? That's, that's not... Where did, where did he get that? He didn't get that from he didn't get that from the Bible, because if I go to Isaiah chapter six, I see something. If I go to Jeremiah chapter one, I see something. I see the same thing. I see God opening Jeremiah's mouth, Isaiah's mouth. I see God opening their mouth, and God said, "I'm going to take my words, not my not my breath. I want to take my words and put them in your mouth." So that when your mouth opens, my words are going to come out of your mouth. Jimmy Carter didn't get his. Where did he get that from? Where did Carter get the idea that the Bible was God's thoughts, but it wasn't God's words? Well, number one, he got it from the NIV committee because that's what they believe. 
He got it from all the Bible scholars that have now infiltrated the Southern Baptist, the Nazarene, the Free Will Baptist, the Independent Baptist, the Pentecostal, the Charismatic, the Presbyterian, the United Methodist. They have penetrated into every single denomination and quote-unquote Christian movement in the world with the idea that the Bible is God's thoughts, but it's not necessarily God's words. Let's see what he says after that. God inspired the Bible, but didn't write every word in the Bible, Carter responded. We know, for instance, that stars can't fall on the earth. Stars are much larger than the earth. That was a limitation of knowledge of the universe or physics or astronomy at that time, but that doesn't bother me at all. It's because you don't care, Jimmy Carter. And you don't study the Bible enough to know that that's exactly what the, if the, if the Bible says the stars fall from heaven to the earth, it's exactly what, it, you just got to know what stars are. President Carter, instead of listening to the evolutionists and the evolutionary astronomers telling you what the Bible really should say, you should just go to the Bible and find out that these stars are angels. That's, that's what you should have done. So here's a guy, he's... Claims to be a born-again Christian. Claims and That's how he got to be president. Because we had tricky dicky, crooked Richard Nixon in the White House who flaunted all of his uh, weirdness and all of his shady dealings in the White House. And America said, you know what, this guy, he's a born-again Southern Baptist. Let's go vote for him. They thought they were getting a Christian. That's what they thought. Boy, were they wrong. Uh, then, it, then they asked the billion dollar question here. When it came to addressing homosexuality, a contentious issue in many Christian circles, Carter talked about his historical nature and delved into his views on how civil ceremonies should be treated. Now, let me, let me just give you some scripture here before I get to that point. Carter should have read 2 Timothy chapter 3 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God that let me let me explain what this means scripture you know what that is words so you know what this verse is saying is saying all the words are inspired by God Carter said oh they're not the Bible's inspired but it's not the words of God boy is he wrong all scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction Boy, I think he needs some correction for instruction in righteousness. Instruction. Stop, 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 stop. Instruction in righteousness. See, we don't know how to live righteously. See, because let's be honest. Let's, we all, all of us, all of us, me, you, all y'all, okay? We all got something in us we don't like. Okay, it's wickedness. We all, we all like to have a little fornication. We all wouldn't, wouldn't mind committing adultery and 